Well, Scott, it's great that you had some cheetah. Thank you so much for saving the day. Now, we'd like to invite you to join us on our challenge of Spurfiles and Franklins. <laughs> Byron and I, uh, well, are participating in today. So, Byron, na 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 na. I'm on my third family of Franklins. <laughs> we've still got the crested Franklins. Of course, we're just trying to make the best of the gloomy weather out here. Now, earlier Byron was discussing, I think very briefly, about Spurfiles versus Franklins. And if we look, can we have a closer look at their legs? We find find them you can see there that they've got little spurs can you see that look at those very sharp spurs at the back very much like a chicken and not quite as long though as a rooster's spurs can get we used to have a rooster his name was chicken Alla king and he had the nastiest spurs in the whole wide world he was a great guard chicken anybody that he didn't know he used to fly and try and attack them it was quite interesting of course including my dad you can imagine that would have made him so happy <laughs> <laughs> also, um, if we hopefully we will find some Natal spur files, or like I said, some Swainson's uh, spur files, and we'll have a look. But the the spur files have got a double set of spurs, so they've got two on each leg, whereas the Franklins have only got one. And they were separated from the same group uh, a couple of years ago. I think they all used to be Franklins, and then they decided, hang on, wait, there's actually a serious difference here in terms of their, their development of spurs. So there we go. Now we've got two different groups. But you can see they're also very miserable today. I think they're quite happy now um, that the rain has let up. I'm not going to hold my breath because I feel as though it's ready to break at any moment again. Um, but they're drying off. They've got their feathers fluffed up, hoping that the little, little breeze that is out at the moment will rustle through their feathers. And that should dry them fairly quickly. Yes, run, run along now. But they're all hanging around these burnt areas. So I think they're also waiting for the new green shoots to come up. They eat quite a variety of different things, these Franklins. Uh, you know, it, it also, I suppose, just like every animal out here, it depends on the season and what's actually around. You can see that one moving off into the burnt areas now. So they will go for... Oh, actually, Cenac, you're wondering if these particular birds ate snails. I've never seen them pecking at a snail before, but, you know, I wouldn't put it past them. Maybe in the summer months when they're more active, but in winter... They typically be going after sort of seeds, any anything that bulbs and things that they could try and peck at. Um, and then as soon as the rain comes in, their diet changes quite drastically. They'll go for insects. They do try and feed on insects when they can, particularly insects that are living in animal dung or feeding off of the animal dung. So even those little midges that we see, they'll try and catch them too. Um, but they, they eat a bit of everything. And I think that's the important thing out here in the wild in order to survive is to be able to change your diet. And that's why the most successful antelope in Africa is the Impala for that exact reason, being able to change up their diet. And Franklins have got a varied diet, as I was saying, as well. So maybe they, I don't think they'd eat snails. There's not many things out here that actually feast upon snails. I don't think they're particularly delicious. Obviously, the animals out here haven't discovered garlic and, um, well, maybe a white wine sauce or something to go with it or, a parmesan cheese which of course makes it more and more delicious and i think that if they had those things you might find more animals feeding on them but that's just what you and i like of course oh apparently i'm making chantal hungry now <laughs> chantal's d2 today also i forgot to say welcome back alice alice is back from her short holiday she spent her time in the kruger with her family she's directing the show today you might also know alice as siri as per james henry <laughs> Alice, aren't you happy that James doesn't call you Siri anymore? Or does he still call you Siri? I can't remember. I haven't heard it pop up for quite some time. Well, well let's not say it too loudly in case it, he starts again. You know what James is like. <laughs> oh, there they go. <laughs> well, they're walking off into the distance. See, they're, they're calling now. What are you all yelling about? Well, they, they call for different reasons. They advertise their territories when they're trying to find a mate. <laughs> now, Eric, you say, don't I think the Franklins sound like someone who's trying to pedal a rusty bike? Yes, that's very creative. I'm going to use that from now on. So thank you very much, Eric, for that fantastic idea. Consider it stolen. If, if I remember, I will always credit you. I will try my, my very best to say that Eric 
gave me this idea. That's good. It's important to try and put things, especially when it comes to bird calls, give them a... Uh, oh, they got it quite excited, that one. A little spring in its step now. Um, it's important to be able to give yourself a sort of familiar sound to try and remember bird calls. I do it with frog calls too. Uh, mammal sounds, a bit difficult, but definitely with the birds and the frogs. frogs. And even the insects to some extent, the crickets and the uh, cicadas and all those wonderful creatures. They also make interesting sounds. But there they go. Right, let's carry on. I don't know what else we're going to find.